Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. In this episode, I will be answering a range of health-related questions that I have found after researching the interwebs and many forums online, including Reddit, which is obviously a very popular one within culture these days, Quora, hopefully I've pronounced that right, and many others. And if this episode is a success and you like me answering health-related questions, then feel free to send me your health-related questions and I will continue to do more Q&A-based episodes. But for this episode, I have spent some time searching the interwebs, searching different forums, as I said there, Reddit, Quora, to name a few, and have picked out some of the common questions and most interesting questions to answer in this episode of the show. Before we do that, though, I would just like to mention this episode is brought to you by Riverside. Riverside is an online studio platform designed to record, edit, and share high-quality podcasts built for growth from the very first day. Powered by AI, you can record in 4K video or from your phone and automatically remove filler words such as ums, as, you knows, and many, many other speech patterns. Built for human conversations, Riverside is designed to create high quality podcasts that sound great. Ready to start your podcast and share your message with the world? If so, head to the link in the show note description to learn more about Riverside and get a 15%, yes, that's a 15% discount off a paid subscription. Now let's dive into today's episode where I will be answering health related questions. And I would just like to share that anything that I do share isn't considered medical advice. I am not a medical professional. And if you need medical advice, I would highly recommend going to seek a professional. However, what I will be sharing while answering these health related questions is my approach to health. And after extensive research, both in ancient wisdom, so practices and methodologies such as Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, etc., many of which we've explored on the show, and also through the lens of modern science, so including learning extensively from podcasts like Huberman Lab and many, many other different outlets and lots of hours spent looking at studies, etc. That my approach to health is very much between the two, and that's in a way why I started the podcast um, and actually decided to more focus on health and through the lens of ancient wisdom and modern science to find a consensus around kind of like what's true for health because I believe that we can learn and take a lot from ancient wisdom so different cultures but also practices like Chinese medicine Ayurveda which is the two that I've spent most of my time in um, all the way to the modern science today and I always like to give the example of the ancient practice of meditation, which is an ancient practice, as I said, as I shared that, and been utilized for thousands, thousands, thousands of, of years, and over the probably the last maybe 10, 15, 20 years, in like more of the scientific scientific environment and academic research and scientific kind of space has been quote unquote validated right. And it can be a powerful practice. And actually, meditation can take form in lots of different forms, right? Um, so it's not just about sitting in a lotus pose and humming, but just about having that. I, call it like, I like to call it like deloading and just being present in the moment, whether that's walking, like a meditative walk or, or more of a integrated practice. So we've covered the practice of meditation a lot on the podcast. And um, that's why I always love to give that example as a bridge between kind of like the ancient wisdom or my ancient wisdom philosophies, but also modern science as well. So yeah, that, that's a prime example there. But let's dive straight into today's episode with the first question, which I'm just going to bring up here. So the first question is on Quora, uh, which is a forum for anyone who doesn't know what Quora is, where lots of people can ask different questions and get answered from and get answers from the community. So the first question is, what is the best diet for healthy living? So we're kicking things off straight with a question 
that can divide a lot of opinion within health and especially within nutrition. So my underlining principle, the best quote unquote diet for healthy living is a diet and I hate the word diet. So I'm just going to kind of throw it out there first. I don't like the word diet. I like prefer the word lifestyle a lot more, but let's just say like as human beings are the things that we eat is a lifestyle is a diet that is free from as much as possible ultra processed food like single biggest principle you know you have lots of different methodologies out there keto carnivore paleo whatever it is and sure you know wherever you look within those uh, spheres are going to have some sort of scientific backing or evidence around like this one's better and this one's better and depending on the context and for the people and you know whatever right but my underlining thesis after going through like the world of nutrition is that if we have a lifestyle let's use that word that is mostly free from ultra processed food and for me an ultra processed food would be something that i I think like once you get beyond something that you buy from a shop or a supermarket, even health food stores, you know, like health food stores aren't guilt free with selling, you know, we're selling like ultra processed food and you look in some of the ingredients, okay, you know, they might not have sugar, for example, but actually some of them still have seed oils, right? And I'm not going to get into like the nuances of like individual ingredients, although we, we will probably touch on them. Like once you get beyond kind of like seven to 10, I actually like for more, I actually like no more than five ingredients f- bought from a shop or a supermarket or a health food store. Something or somewhere, I should say, that isn't made at home. So you don't know what's going in it. Then we need to start to become more kind of conscious of that and move away those foods right so a process ultra processed food for me is something that's going to have probably more than seven to ten ingredients and when you look at the ingredients you're like actually what is that like if you if you look at at an ingredients label you don't know where an ingredient is or you know you don't know what it is or where it comes from and it sounds like a chemical right it sounds like you know what's this then then that's like red flag alert so to answer this question more directly the best diet for healthy living is one that is as free as possible from ultra processed foods and my definition of ultra processed foods is ingredients that exceeds more than seven to ten on the ingredient label package etc it's it's actually probably in a package to begin with to be honest and when you look at the ingredients you don't know like you can't tell like what it is right so for example um you know, there's lots of different gums and kind of binders and stuff on when you look at the ingredients or you go to, especially in, in the States, you know, you have like red and then a number, right? Or was it blue and then a number, you know, like these additives and preservatives, etc. red flag alert. So that's for me, the best kind of diet lifestyle for healthy living is one that is mostly free from ultra process foods and you know we kind of get into the debate of like low carb and kind of all of this conversation but i think if you follow the like the principle of just removing ultra processed foods as much as possible and you know some people say like the 80 20 rule for me i started kind of applying the 80 20 rule but then i kind of moved away from it and just went to more of a natural kind of single mostly single ingredient diet lifestyle right whereby like I don't really, so the ultra processed food that I, or the more kind of processed food um, that I probably eat is dark chocolate. There's a brand that I have um, that's got like, so it's in a package, right? So that's a little, you know, so, you know, that's um, a single, it's just, that's evident it's been processed in some way, right? And I think it's got like three ingredients. So it's like, cacao um yeah cacao butter coconut sugar like cacao powder or something um 72 percent like dark chocolate right and so for me like that's fine because it, it could like i can identify cacao butter i can identify uh cacao uh, powder i think it's it's got on, on the ingredient can't remember off the top of my head and coconut sugar you know i cannot identify kind of where that would potentially come from right 
maybe from the, the coconut sugar perspective, not ideal as a sweetener. You know, there's probably better sweetness out there. Stevia, honey is nature's ultimate sweetener. Like honey and fruit is nature's ultimate sweetest. So I always tend to go, go to that. But to get a dark chocolate with honey in, I haven't actually seen that yet. So I'm digressing a bit here. But my, my, my point kind of expanding on this was like some people say the 80 20 rule for me it's just like most of my day most of my life most of my weeks most of my months i just focus on eating single ingredients food right so like vegetables fruits um and my point i was trying or alluding to was that i'm not perfect so sometimes i might have that bit of like that dark chocolate right but yeah i feel like once you kind of just embrace that way of living and then it just you know I'm not even tempted by going to get a Kit Kat right? instead of like the dark chocolate. I'm just not, you know, I'm going to, um, like if I was to go into, a, a, or when I do go into a supermarket, right, to get fruit or something, um, you know, you see all of the other different aisles. I'm not tempted to go down the aisle with all the biscuits and stuff, right? Like when it does come to those things, I make them myself at home. And then there are some brands that I also go to the ingredients are you know, I, I'm I'm okay with because it's less than seven to ten, and I know where they come from, etc. So, digressing a bit, uh, my point being is that to focus on a diet with the minimum amount of processed foods, ultra processed foods, as possible, um, and to focus that. If you want to apply the 80 20, 20 rule to to begin with, then that's great. That's going to going to get you going. And for me, in my experience, over time, you can just focus on eating single ingredients foods your taste buds actually change and you just naturally gravitate towards those i guess i guess that's what i'm trying to say and i'm actually someone that probably has a little bit of a sweet tooth kind of as well but my sweet tooth isn't really towards like towards um a snickers bar or something right like i would find that super sweet and actually i'm lactose intolerant so that would make me ill as well but i've, I've noticed that you know i just gravitate to more towards more like things from nature just kind of program now right honey through if i do want something sweet and so i would uh i would recommend to focus on those types of foods okay so next up another question from cora what is the best way to stay healthy so the best way to stay healthy is one to become i think like one to become like health conscious we're gonna have some questions later about health anxiety which i think i might have experienced um because there's also like the downside of becoming health conscious in, in, in a bit like once you know something you can't know it and that's one of the paradoxes and one of the challenges with becoming more health conscious and, and living life in this way i guess but the best way to stay healthy is to become health conscious and make health a, a priority in your life because if you don't make health pri a priority in your life then with all the marketing out there you know we just spoke about diet and lifestyle and nutrition and food you're going to get sweeped into all of the the marketing and all food companies use marketing when they put on the package healthy or low carb or something it's all just marketing right all just marketing so when you make health your priority your, your focus you'll become more aware to that like over time and you start to realize that actually it, your question is actually healthy look at the ingredients be like no right so i think the best way to stay healthy, stay healthy is to make health a priority in your life make it your number one value it's my number one value and then i would say to define what health means for you you know we all might have a slightly different definition of health and what that means to us and what that would give us and what that would mean for our lives etc so here we're developing more the why around health we can then get more kind of tactical into the things that you can actually do so a few episodes back i shared my holistic approach to health and living consciously i would link that around this video or around this podcast so you can check that out because i think that would help and give kind of more tips right practical tips but if we just take like the free basics, I think mostly, although they have mental and emotional benefits, I think probably a more physical body, but um, we'll share them anyway. So sleep or see, I want to go breath first, breath, sleep, movement, and nutrition. So if you focus on like, those four things, not three things, four things. So how you're being aware, like how you're breathing in what situations, getting good quality sleep, prioritizing your nutrition and as i shared it in the last answer removing away from ultra processed foods and movement whatever sort of movement that you, that you like if it's a walk if it's yoga if it's cardio if it's whatever it is if it's strength training um pursuing some sort of movement daily and i recommend multiple times a day it's probably more of the practical ways in terms of to answer this question on the best ways to stay healthy but uh, going back to the, what i said in the beginning 
um, becoming just making health. And I say just, it's not necessarily that easy, but prioritizing your health, you know, making it a core value in your life, focusing there, becoming more health conscious, defining what health means, and then uh, so much wisdom out there around like the practical side of it. I think that's the best way to stay healthy and see health as like, because it is, right? So it, it, is what I'm, it is what I'm about to say. It's not a one and done. It's a journey. It's, it's a lifestyle. So see health as a lifestyle would be my final thoughts kind of on this question. So to see health life as a lifestyle is not a one and done, you know? Um, and I think that's sometimes mindset shift, right? That's sometimes the trick that people get into, like, oh, I eat healthy for this period of time. It's like, no, you. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle, you know? I think when you embrace it as a lifestyle, then what I shared in the last answer becomes easier as well because you're just not as tempted by everything around you because does it fit with your lifestyle? So there's some interconnectedness within my answers and hopefully uh, consistency is, as well. So the next question is from Reddit and I'm new to Reddit, so bear with me. So this was on the community Ask Reddit um, and I think the user was Yuba Sika, I think, um, to display it on the screen for those that are watching on video. What's massively improved your mental health? So what's massively improved my mental well-being, my mental my movement? So when I was at my lowest with depression and anxiety, I realized that movement was one of the biggest things. And I, I'm going to track back a little bit. I've realized in hindsight, movement was one of the biggest things that helped me to get or start to move away and get out of that situation place I was in to then give me the life, I guess, to focus on the other areas of my life and just become more than health conscious rather than, because um, when you're in that place of depression, et cetera, you're like, it's like you're closed off, you're in a box, it's very dark, et cetera, you know, so movement was starting to like see the light almost, right? And then started to change nutrition do different forms of movement and it's been a, been a progression since then but i think movement was in hindsight the biggest thing that has improved my mental health which is a little bit um of a paradox as well right because i was having this conversation with somebody yesterday and when i'm recording this is that oftentimes when we're in that state of low mood or depression etc we don't want to go to the gym. We don't want to go for a walk. We don't want to go for a run. We don't want to go outside, right? But it's doing those things, like getting over that resistance, I guess, um, and doing those things that is going to then give us like the energy almost and light us up and lift us up to then continue to do it more. So then we get out of the state that we're in. So it's like this paradoxical thing. And we we're kind of more talking about in the context of like feeling tired. Like when we're feeling tired, we don't maybe want to go to the gym, but it's actually going to the gym that's going to give us the energy so we don't feel tired anymore. I think it's similar with anxiety and depression, et cetera. When we relating it to movement, it's like moving our body, et cetera, is releasing that anxious energy, right? Because that's what anxiety, at least from what I've kind of un understood with like emotions and feelings, right? It's, it's energy, right? And when we're feeling an anxious, it's energy that's trapped in certain, you know, so if I feel anxious, I used to feel quite anxious, like in my chest area. So that's energy that's just kind of trapped there, right? And I always remember that when I got that feeling, like it was almost like the, the fight and flight response, right? Like I wanted to, to run, right? So that's like your body's way, your, your, um, in, yeah, intrinsic kind of, you, that's just like your body's way of telling you to like to release or for me and because we, it's, all, it's all kind of personalized as well to release that energy right so no wonder i wanted to move as once i started moving that started to decrease i would say movement was the biggest then secondly to that it's because like sleep is going to improve your mental health eating the right food is going to improve your mental health you know, physical health mental health is interconnected things that are going to really improve our physical health is going to most times improve our mental health as well, right? I think other things moving aside from the basic sleep, et cetera, journaling, writing, massive game changer. You know, I remember the first few times I started to journal and write, it was just a relief, right? Just all this, all this relief, you know? And since I've been doing journaling ever since. It's one of those things, like, I don't get the same benefits now as I did when I started. But then whenever I stop journaling, let's just say for a prolonged period of time, even a week, two weeks, I'm like, something shifts within me right and so that's why I, I keep it up so like every day like one day i might not want to journal but i still do it because i know that it's actually helping even if i'm not in the moment feeling the same benefits as i did way back when i first started in my, my first journal session which was such a relief so if you're looking for tips and wisdom outside of 
outside of the basics, let's call them, um, as we've spoken about, or as I've shared mostly so far in this episode, then I would definitely go to journaling as a strategy to improve um, mental health and well-being. You know, and writing down how you're feeling, like any insights into why, like what's triggering your them and and stuff. You know, um, I I love brain dumps as well. So when I've got a lot on my mind, I just do a massive brain dump in brain dump in my journal. That massively helps as well. And you know, sometimes people want structure with their journal. I think the structure for me, I found is developed and changed over time so if you're wanting to get started with journaling what i would do is get a pad or even just a piece of paper and a pen and just like start writing you know we'll, we'll allow whatever comes through you to come through you and just start to do that day after day after day similarly to with the other areas of health if it's nutrition over time you may type into google like journal questions and come across some questions that resonate with you um, and then like the practice grows similarly to most other areas of our health but it's just like getting started and one of the best ways that i've actually learned from other people to get started is not overthink it and just to start writing so pick up a pen pick up a piece of paper just start writing maybe what's going on in your life at the moment how you feel or feel about that if you've got a lot of your mind brain dump is a good strategy um, so these are things that have definitely improved my mental health and uh, well-being Next up, question also on Reddit from the community anxiety. Have you overcome health anxiety? So I shared beforehand how sometimes when we're on the journey of health and becoming really health conscious, I feel like I'm really health conscious now of just like questioning everything, especially when you get into the nuances within health and more so like the toxins in our environment and microplastics and kind of all that stuff. It's like, oh shit, we're kind of created a world now through um industry whereby so much you know so many toxins around us like is there hope and like losing that hope and i think like when we lose that hope that's sometimes where the anxiety to come in like am i doing enough am i doing enough and have i fell into this space uh, at times yeah i feel i feel like i've fell into this space definitely at times throughout my life over the last probably four to five years and just kind of subconsciously worrying about being exposed to different toxins like if this food has these ingredients in, like checking the ingredients labels, etc. And then how did I overcome that? I guess letting go of like the perfection, the, like the perfection side, like realizing that I don't need to be perfect, but also realizing like um we're going to be exposed to toxins, right? So like learned a lot about microplastics um recently. And while there's always something that we can do to reduce our exposure to them we're going to be exposed to them because that's now the world that we've created right so there's no point worrying about it and this year has been a massive lesson for me in like the art of letting go and you know, things are what they are and all i can do is control my actions and thoughts and behaviors and um how i show up in the world so um, just moving more towards kind of that place of, of just letting go, accepting, giving the example of uh, micro uh, plastics and toxins in our environment. They're going to be there. What are the things that I can do in my immediate environment um, and the actions that I can take to consistently reducing my load there and then just doing them and then letting go, you know? There's also like a mindset shift of like seeing it as like, a little bit like a uh, well, a journey, right? Because it's a journey, it's not a one and done, as I shared beforehand, but also it's a little bit of a game, right? So seeing how your health is um, a game of like how, you know, like a long-term game, like how how much can I like um, reduce my exposure to microplastics as an example, because we've been talking a lot about that. But yeah, you know, I think health anxiety is definitely real, especially when you're researching a lot and you're getting into like these nuances within health um around things like environmental toxins now i think the information and the importance of the information to educate the population is important because i would rather know than not know so then i can do something about it but i still have those moments as i shared beforehand whereby like well now i know that i can't unknow that so like it's, it's weird like because beforehand so i i'll give an example so for example like I used to eat foods that had 
seed oils in them, right? But I didn't know that seed oils, let's take the seed oil of sunflower oil. I didn't know that the seed oil, sunflower oil, was bad for human health or seed oils in general, right? So <clears throat> I used to eat foods with sunflower oil in them. Then I learned that sunflower oil, seed oils in general, is not optimal for human health. There's better oils, coconut oil, avocado oil, ultra virgin, olive oil, etc., ghee, butter, um, that are great options as well. So once I learned that, I needed to change what I ate in terms of seed oils, right? And I can't now undo undo that knowledge, right? So every time I go um, somewhere and somebody asks me if I want something to eat, I'm like, no, like, that's my default answer because it's probably going to have seed oils in it, right? So I'm just not going to eat. I'm going to bring my own food, right? Like, make peace with that and in a way i've kind of always done that as well but even the food i was bringing sometimes had seed oils in so um i can't undo that piece of information that i learned which can cause sometimes a little bit of health anxiety around kind of the food situation however by now knowing that and reducing my load or reducing kind of eliminating that from my diet it's actually helped my health in multiple ways right um so for example it's the same with refined sugar as well so i used to i don't want to use the word suffer but from my skin conditions right and once i eliminated those two things primarily from what i've kind of tested on myself for one of a better word i noticed that the skin conditions dry skin and um a little bit of eczema here and there and itchy skin actually suffered with that quite a bit during my anxious spell as well actually um since i eliminated those those physical symptoms alleviated and then started to go away. So by learning that piece of information, that CDLs aren't great for human health and just the process they, they go through is just quite scary, actually, that, and then choosing to eliminate them has actually benefited my physical health because I don't have those symptoms anymore. But it's, on the flip side, in the early days, provoked have anxiety because we live in the environment where that, that oil is everywhere. So once then I start to, to let go of that and realizing, as I said before, about the toxins, I'm always going to be exposed to them, then it was a lesson in letting go and just focusing on what I can control. So I can control whether I consume seed oil or not. I might not be able to control the fumes in the atmosphere, right? So why worry about that? So it's also about, in a way, putting things into perspective. And then that's where I, I come into this kind of, or share about Focus on things that you can control to lower your toxicity load. And that helps in a way with health anxiety. Like there's no point me worrying again about the fumes in the atmosphere, which in some level is probably harming my health and harming all of our health. But I can control whether I consume the seed oil or not. And that's probably the one of the best examples I can give. And letting go from the side over here where you know, we're exposed to the fumes and the microplastics, etc. Okay, so next up, another question on Reddit. We have virtual families. B. Berlaney, hopefully I pronounced that correct, know anyone how to increase health? So there was lots of questions around kind of increasing health, getting into better health. And my number one kind of thesis around increasing health, etc., is to become more kind of consciously aware of your day-to-day -day life and how the choices and decisions you're making in day-to-day -day life is affecting your health. And then over time, making better choices and decisions and making changes to get to, quote-unquote, better health or to achieve better health or to come more back into homeostasis and more in alignment with your natural systems and just health in general, right? Because health is life at the end of the day and life is health. That's what I also believe. A few episodes back, Martin Gillespie shared a great tip actually i thought where he shared that each month of the year focus on like improving one area of your health so like for one month it could be that you learn in that episode around or in you come across this episode i'm kind of talking about seed oils you go off and research about seed oils and then in january for example it's going to be a month of trying different oils finding the best one that works for you, you know, your body, etc., and prioritizing cooking with those oils, consuming those oils rather than the seed oils moving forward. Boom, you've eliminated a toxin and now you can move on. Same with in the episode we cooked a lot about, um, or we spoke about a lot about cookware and the utensils in our kitchen and, you know, like Teflon pans and these plastic utensils, etc. 
they leak plastic into our food, we're consuming them, it's going to damage our health, right? So maybe a month, you know, maybe now you have, you have some money left over from your pay packet, you're going to invest in using stain, you're going to invest in stainless steel utensils instead, and make that the focus for that month. And so over time, you know, you're going to get to a better state of health and increase your health. Um, I definitely go back and check out that episode. That's a great watch. Uh, great tips there shared by Martin. And I would recommend to do that. But I think becoming just health conscious, making health a priority in your life is going to be the theme here um, if you want to increase your health and get to uh, better state of, states of health. But realizing that it's also in your quote unquote power, right? Your, your control for your daily choices and actions. And that's not always easy. That's not always not nice to accept, especially with all the marketing around us. And sometimes we can be tricked into kind of, you know, buying this food that we think is healthy, but, but isn't. That's kind of part of the journey. I think having that a little bit of, um, I think maybe skepticism's the right word, but also curiosity as well, like healthy skepticism, curiosity about things and just questioning things. I think it's one of the skills here to increase health and get to better health. Okay, so next up, another question on Reddit. In the nutrition community, Jamie E. Tan asks, what are your, your, what are your most realistic health tips you follow? I would go back to the episode I shared on a few episodes ago, my approach to health and living consciously, realistic tips. Like a lot of people want like the quick answer to, to tips, but I think if we want to choose realistic tips, I would go back to the f four most basic things, right? And encourage people, even if it's to do one, apply one main principle within each four domains. So your breath, so maybe create some sort of breathing or meditation practice for five minutes in the morning and five minutes before you go to bed five minutes we all have five minutes right if you don't have five minutes for your health when it comes to the breathing category then you're gonna probably have to face illness so you're gonna have to make some choices and some sacrifices at some point in your journey secondly sleep decide what time you want to um or decide what time you want to maybe need to wake up in the morning and then count back how many hours night sleep you want um, i would aim somewhere between seven and nine um, amount of hours of sleep so let's say you want to wake up at seven count back eight hours be in bed by 11 and then that's like your quote unquote realistic health principle within your sleep category next up we would have um, nutrition so in nutrition i would go back to the first or my first answer and um eliminate ultra processed foods people now people might say that's not realistic but okay, let's flip it on its head. You go into the supermarket and instead of the first aisle you go to is you, I know the aisle with the crisps, et cetera. You, um, a realistic thing that you could do is to, because you're in control of where you walk in the supermarket, right? Is to um, start, at least start, right? By going around the, the outside, because when you go around the outside, you usually have fruit and veg on the outside fish counter meat deli counter etc so stay to the perimeter of supermarkets right realistic thing you can do and buy up what 80 percent minimum and over of your food from the outside of, of the aisle and that would be my quote-unquote realistic health tip within the domain of nutrition next up and finally movement would be i think it's quite realistic to be honest to get 10k steps a day like, I think it's realistic. Like, I was sharing this with a family member a little while ago. What I kind of worked out was that if I break up my walks into three 30 minute walks a day, right? That's going to, and I roughly do about around um, 1,000 steps every 10 minutes. So, in a 30 minute, I'm going to do 3,000 steps. You do three 30 minute walks per day, you're at 9,000 steps. And then the thousand you probably do around your house. Or around work or something, or out in and out of the car, in and out to supermarket, etc. I think that's quite realistic. You know, you take a walk in the morning, you take a walk on your lunch break, you take a walk at the end of the day. Like, I think that's pretty realistic. Let me, let me know if you think that's realistic. Like, I think I think it's realistic, guys. So next up, we have well, again another question on Reddit. Ask old people, um, and the username is a load of letters. Are T D H X. What are your best health tips? Uh, please advise us 
the youngsters. A lot of what I've shared in this episode on my best health tips, you know, my number one health tip, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but is to make health a priority in your life. Make health a priority in, in your life. And there's lots of practical things that we can do. I've shared a, you know, a few in this episode, I've shared, and my guests have shared a lot in past episodes. But um, p- people always want like the next the next tip, the next hack, the next the next thing, right? Where really health is found in the daily fundamentals uh, and making just making it a priority. You know, if something happens in your life, you want to make a decision, make it through like the health lens, you know? And that is where health becomes a priority in your life. So my best health tip would be to make health a priority in your life. Next up, so we're moving on to health metrics. So in the forum, Apple Watch, and I uh, can't pronounce that, the username, but it's K-H-U-O-N-G-291. What health metrics do you, you track the most in a day? I don't track any health metrics in a day, like HRV or uh, heart rate or any of these metrics, etc. However, if people count the number of steps you do per day, then I, that's probably the only health metric that I quote unquote track in a day is going to be my step count and being aware of that. A few months ago, probably a year ago, when I had an Apple Watch, I was tracking more of kind of all of the different metrics, etc. that my Apple Watch could track. I was very aware of that, probably leaning more into, the, again, the health anxiety side of, did I do my 10K steps? Do I do, did I do my 10K steps, etc. and kind of constantly thinking about that. Um, so I sold it and then that alleviated that anxiety, right? And because I knew that if I do three walks, three 30 minute walks or a 90, one big 90 minute walk, I'm going to at least be at 9K steps. And then to be honest, I'm, I do more than a thousand just like around the home, work, in and out and just kind of day. I'm way over 10K and I'm probably averaging more 17 to 20K to steps per day. Like some days I do, I think a few weeks ago, I done like, 27 to 30k steps like multiple days in a row so there's no health anxiety there anymore so that's the only health metric i track on a day-to-day basis there are really important ones to track like overall for our health so i gave one there hrv and you can check out the episode with rich allers uh where we speak about i mean that was more about health metrics from a blood work perspective when you may go and get blood work done. But obviously, you know, you can track your HRV or um, things like heart rate, variable, heart rate variability, heart rate in general. And there are many of us. Blood sugar is a key one, especially for those that are more um, on, you know, kind of on, on the paradigm of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. Scale on, on the scale of kind of metabolic disease, if you're aiming or, or if you're not aiming, no one wants to aim there. But if you're moving more towards kind of diabetes, etc., you're going to really want to get your blood sugar dialed in and kind of sort that out. So, I think in terms of health metrics, um, there are some big ones that we can all con- consciously be aware of. And then, depending on what health issues and conditions we're focusing on or are experiencing, then I think we can also track those specific ones depending on where we are in our health journey so that would be my answer here but to answer the question what do i track just my steps on a day-to-day basis and um that's what that's that's where i'm at just yeah i don't really track my sleep in terms of sleep cycles or or, or anything at the moment but uh that could change when i get an aura ring okay so next question uh, this one was on quora so what is something i can start doing to improve my mental health overall so I think the biggest thing you can start doing to improve your mental health overall is something that I've already included in this episode, which is going to be journaling slash writing, doing maybe like daily brain dumps. And I think one of the biggest things I've most helped me the most recently is around our feelings and our emotions, right? So around our feelings and our emotions, we often a lot in society have accepted the fact that while they are very complex, when somebody asks us or when we ask someone, how are you? And we ask, how how are you? We use basic terms, right? So surface level terms. So like, I'm good, I'm tired, very surface level. Like, what does that actually mean? And so what I've realized most recently, or I think is going to help a lot of people in mental, with their mental well-being, 
is to start to break our mental no start to break our, our emotions and feelings kind of down into four categories and using this as part of your journaling practice right so every morning and every evening instead of just checking in with how i feel checking with how you feel through four lenses right through four levels physically how do you feel in your physically but in your physical body mentally how do you feel mentally how do you feel emotionally tied up sometimes in our mental state but different and once you start to kind of see them as two different areas and notice the subtleties and how one affects the other and the relationship there that's profound and then how do you feel every morning every evening spiritually which for me um, i like to kind of refer to in my mind at least as like your purpose right so when you wake up in the morning do you like you might feel great physically you might feel mentally calm which is affecting your emotions in terms of your feeling peaceful right and then but then you come to kind of your, your, your spirit right or your spirit you know checking in spiritually and you don't feel connected to anything right you don't feel like you have that sense of kind of purpose maybe you are still going to although you know life is good and you feel great physically and mentally you know pretty calm it's like i'm still going to a job that doesn't light me up you know and i think actually that's one of the dang- most dangerous places that we can kind of be in from my own, my own experience right so point being here something that you can start doing to improve your mental health again you have all the, all of the practical things movement etc that i've shared but i think journaling is one that doesn't get spoken about enough maybe it does maybe i just have, haven't seen that obviously lots of people know about it but then checking in with our emotions and feelings not just using service level terms such as oh i'm feeling tired break that down how do you feel physically like so some days i feel physically kind of achy and a bit tired but actually mentally i'm kind of i'm, I'm kind of okay you know there are often times i've realized a connection between all four and once you start to use this as part of your journey and practice and a self-discovery tool you just become more aware emotionally and how you feel and that overall can start to improve your mental well-being and your mental health because then you start to notice trends and insights and can build upon that so journaling and then using kind of this practice of checking in with how you feel through the four different lenses was something that i would recommend to start doing to improve your mental health and well-being next up also on quora we have what are the best things for mental health so i've just also shared around journaling so journaling is i'm gonna repeat this you know go to journal journaling for your mental health i also think i shared about movement earlier so i'm going to share something else that is the best thing for mental health we've covered about it a couple of times in the podcast in terms of light light exposure so one thing that if you want to improve your mental health and one of the best things that i think is for mental health is to get outside and some form of light and to be exposed to like daylight natural light and you know a lot, a lot of people we spoke about on the podcast especially in the morning you know like a lot of people who face mental well-being mental health issues depression etc wake up in the morning and they don't want to get out of bed right and it's not because it's cold outside right it's because they don't necessarily have that desire to that purpose to they're lacking that motivation i've been there um but it's just again it's that what we should talk about before is once you're able to get over that initial, initial kind of resistance and get outside even when you know, to this day sometimes i face low mood i'm like oh i'm outside the sunrise is coming up i feel feel better right so um it's like breaking it down so i think one of the best things you can do for your mental health every day especially if you're in the deeps of uh, low mood and depression etc it's not really even think about the rest of the day right um not you know don't even think about the rest of the day the rest of the day will take care of itself when you wake up in the morning right your mind will have to be running like oh another day you know another often shit day or if you're so low you know all, all these thoughts right my number one tip would be or number one best thing in that situation is just take a deep breath take a deep breath calm the mind and get out of bed and just go outside okay now that might be very simple that might be so hard for a, a, a lot of people but i think it's going to be one of the best things for mental for for your mental health like eluding the fact of everything else you've got, got to do that day just take that breath get out of bed and get outside you know it's about breaking it down it's not about you know because i think sometimes within health it's like so overwhelming you know i need to improve my mental health by you know, people say i need movement as i've shared or, or journaling kind of all these things i've quote unquote got to do and so it's just about like breaking it down one thing at a time and so the first thing wake up in the morning deep breath second thing get out of bed third thing get outside 
and then just let the day take care of itself. So I think that would be one of the best things that's different from everything else I've shared that is going to be a good thing for your mental health based on everything that I've learned through the importance of light has on our mood and our overall well-being. And that when, and it kind of makes sense, right? Because when we are depressed, we want to be in a dark room and, and everything, you know, we want it to be dark and kind of close the curtains, etc. which is let, allow that light to come in and that will hopefully light you up. Okay, so another question back to Reddit. So we have COVID long haulers. Rude sprink les 4118. Recommendations on wearable tech for health monitoring. So as I shared beforehand, that I sold my Apple Watch probably a year ago at the recording of this. So I shared it, so I sold my Apple Watch because I was noticing I was checking it too much and was it actually helpful. I was learning a lot about kind of like all the blue, the effects of them. <laughs> it can sound a bit OTT maybe and like the health anxiety piece of sharing beforehand. But the effects of like Bluetooth and kind of actually what effect is uh, EMFs actually as well. Most EMFs has on kind of our health, etc. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to eliminate it. However, I do want to get a aura ring. Um, from what from the research I've done, an aura ring has less or potentially no EMFs or less than the Apple Watch, potentially none or none that really affects our health, uh, which is why I'm kind of going more there. Um, I've actually got the sizing kit for the Aura Ring delivered, so I'm kind of in that process of kind of choosing the size. So who knows? On the episode, you might see me wearing an Aura Ring in the future. But um, yeah, in terms of, of recommendations for health, for wearable tech obviously uh the whoop band i've tried i've i actually got the trial for that so after i saw my apple watch i got the trial for that used it for some reason it didn't i maybe it was at the time so maybe the point i was at in my life when i was trialing it it just didn't work for me so i'm not going to say it doesn't work because athletes use it and loads of other people use it and find it really really valuable when i had the trial and i was testing it out in that particular moment, it didn't work for me. So what I found was that you, they have like a journal bit where every every day you kind of go in and kind of tick or cross what you did, et cetera, et cetera. Like sometimes it tracks it in the moment, but other times, you know, you've got to go and put, put in how many hours sleep, you know, or what you did for the day, like what recovery practice you've done today, if you've done foam rolling, for example, like I sometimes do. And that, again, given that point in my time, which is a little bit time consuming. So, which obviously like, when you input all of that, it's going to have a different output on like the recovery scores because the Whoop Band and the app gives you recovery scores and sleep scores, etc. So that was kind of like the little bit of a battle that I was facing. And I just decided that I didn't want any wearable tech for monitoring health at that particular moment. So for the last year, I haven't had any wearable tech. So um, I do think there's a place for it. My word of warning would be to make sure that you're controlling the tech, not the tech controlling you, to not get caught up in it. And yeah, like, is one better than the other? Probably I've tried two, Apple Watch and Whoop Band. Overall, I probably prefer just my Apple Watch, even though Whoop Band, from a scientific perspective, at least from a health monitoring perspective, gives you more just because it automatically tracks workouts, syncs with the with my phone quite well, obviously being an Apple user, and just more like the seamless process of, of it, you know? From a more health monitoring perspective, obviously Whoop is superior to Apple Watch, although Apple Watch is making some good improvements. But I'm looking forward to getting my Aura Ring, trying that. So I'll probably come back to this question in a few months once I've got that, tested that out, and seeing how that's performed for me but there is a place for it and rich Allen, who's joined me on the podcast three times three times so far is an expert within that space and we're also going to be doing more taking a deep dive into into the kind of the health tech and wearable tech space so look out for that episode probably give you more insights and be more helpful with this question and answering this question than i'm being helpful with my answer okay so two more questions to go and then we're going to wrap this one up guys 
But before we do so, I would just like to take a quick break to mention Real Superfoods. Real Superfoods is a health and awareness brand on a mission to make superfoods more, more accessible and convenient for everyday use. I've been using Real for the last few years now. I love their Magic Matcha blend and Gut Feel blend and also their superfood energy bars are great when I need that extra boost on the go. This Black Friday, Real launch its Rooted in Wellness campaign, centered around the importance of prioritizing our health and wellness this holiday season and the importance that it has for overall being the foundation of living a good, happy life. So if you would like to promote your health and wellness and live a more happier life, and I think we all want that, then check out the link in the show note description to learn more about Real Superfoods and save up to 40% in the sale of the year. The more goodies you buy, the more you save. Now let's get back to answering the final couple of questions before bringing this episode to a close. So the next question also found on Ask Reddit was tricky special 8594. What massively improved your mental health? So some of the same questions coming up here, guys, but I'm going to give you a slightly different answer. So Movement massively improved my health. Journaling massively improved my health. Nutrition massively, massively improved my health, mental health, or massively improved my mental health. And I would say sleep. I thought I would say that sleep has massively improved my mental health as well. Um, and also breathing and some sort of meditation practice massively improved my mental health as well. So I'm going to go with the breath and kind of meditation, kind of talk about it from kind of one practice. Whenever I do some form of meditation or some form of breath work, I end the practice feeling so much more calm and relaxed and able to go into my day much more calmer and relaxed. And when things come up in my day, I feel less triggered, feel calmer, able to deal with them, gives me, gives me mental energy. The list is endless. It's, it helps me to, and why I'm linking this with mental health is because it's helped me to realize that I'm not my thoughts. It's helped me to calm and kind of like, my anxiety. I think I'm actually a little bit more prone to anxiety and that energy. And overall, it's helped me to be more in control of my emotional and mental state. That's what's massively another thing that's massively improved my mental health. Within like the domain of health, it's not just one thing. And the same with mental health. Like one thing just doesn't improve your mental health. And hopefully you're understanding this throughout my answers and this episode right so it's not just one thing but but to give a different answer to what i've shared beforehand developing some sort of breath work meditation mindfulness practice is going to definitely improve your mental health i'm not going to tell you exactly what that is you find one for yourself you know that's not potentially sitting in, sitting in a lotus pose right it could be that you leave your phone at home and go for a mindful walk in nature right and just allow yourself to be in the present moment but i but i do believe that to improve any aspect of our health our health especially our mental well-being we do need some sort of practice to detach from the outside world and that's away also from screens and that's also away from watching something or you know some sort of things that just ultimately stimulate us right we need that form of detachment and that's what meditation breath work whatever form qigong like there's all these different kind of meditative quite kind of practices give you and so my recommendation would be to develop one for yourself whatever that looks like for you final question was from the morocco fred and the username is sarah S. Batty, how do I seek mental health? Uh, seeking health, seeking mental health is about making it a priority in your life, right? And why I chose some a lot of kind of mental health questions is because there was a lot of mental health questions on the threads, right? On the forums. And it was, it was interesting. Like so many people, and it's a representation, I think, of culture, society, etc., are seeking specifically like better mental health not realizing that actually our mental health is tied up in physical health, right? And physical health is tied up in mental health. And there's like a symbiotic relationship, our emotional health, our spiritual health. And that actually health, although we, like, we have these different domains, is, is like one thing. So although you might be struggling more mentally, there's things that you can do with your physical body, movement, sunlight, 
sleep extension that will improve your mental health. And I think overall in culture and society, moving away from seeing health as like all these different aspects of our health and life. I mean, sometimes it can help to simplify. I, I, I don't know. I just think it just kind of like, like dividing up our, like dividing up the human experience, right? And my approach to health is very much holistic that one area affects another area of your health and well-being, And that there are these just, I'm using the word just again, not as simple as easy as that, but there are these underlying principles with movement, with sunlight exposure, with nutrition, with sleep, with breathwork or meditation, that actually when we do them, we do them consistently over time, not just for one week or one month or three months, but making them a lifestyle. I'm going to finish on this, making them a lifestyle then we're going to see profound improvements, not just within our mental health, but within every domain of our health. So uh, how do you seek mental health? The same as health in general, right? Make it a priority, become aware of how you're feeling through those four different lenses I mentioned earlier and start to um, become aware of what's having an impact and then having almost sometimes the courage to, to change that. So. Guys, um, hope you've enjoyed this episode today. Answering some health questions that I found on the interwebs, on some forums. Yeah, I, you know, if you found this insightful, I will definitely do another one. Before we finish today's episode, though, I would also just like to mention Lark as well, because Lark is the self cleaning water bottle and purification system brand that uses UVC LED light to eliminate up to 99.9% of hidden nasties found in our water supply, like chlorine, lead, I think mercury as well was found, and many, many others. And I've also noticed it improves the taste quality of our water, the water that we drink. I definitely noticed the difference between the water that's filtered in my Lark Pitcher uh, water filter or the Pure Fizz water bottle that I have as well from, from Lark, and water that hasn't. And also by Using Lark, we are ending single-use plastics. We don't need to go to shops and buy plastic water bottles, therefore promoting sustainability. They have a Black Friday sale. So this Black Friday, you can find the perfect gift, maybe for yourself or for your loved ones, um, and get the best deals of the year with up to 30% off Lark's site when you go over there. Um, and they have a range of different offers. So you can save up to 30% when you spend more than $200, 20% when you spend $120 or more, and 10% off orders when you spend less than $100. To get these offers, all you need to do is head to the link in the show note description, and yeah, you will be able to get your hands on the perfect gifts of the year just in time for the holiday season uh, this year this year homes and conditions may apply now turning our attention back to wrapping up this episode if again if you have any health related questions that you would like me to answer then do comment below this podcast episode or reach me on social media you can also ask any future guests that i bring onto the show health related questions as well would love to kind of um ask your questions directly um obviously in this episode i've spent some time searching the interwebs and finding questions on forums as i shared beforehand so leave a comment below this episode whether you're watching on youtube listening on spotify or apple Podcasts, or wherever else you get your episodes from i read every comment and appreciate you being here finally i will look forward to sharing the next episode really really soon see you then